folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. And it just came out on Blu-ray recently called True Beverly Hills. It's a movie about a Beverly Hills wife who's wealthy, who's also a shopaholic, you know, because she buys a lot of clothes, you know, just living the lifestyle of the rich and outrageous <laughs> and famous, of course. Dresses up with all these fancy clothing that she loves. She also has a husband who works at an auto shop chain and has a daughter having her join the Girl Scouts in which Phyllis Neffler wants up um, being part of as a troop leader in Troop Beverly Hills. Yep, and this is it's been the first time it finally came out on Blu-ray as mastered in 4K so there's some black levels, but not as much because I think the transfer looks a whole lot better. It's finally in widescreen. Looks so much better than all the previous DVDs that came out, including the VHS too, which I also own. Yeah, I waited a long time for this movie to come out, and I'm glad it did. It even has new extras on the back right there. Yeah, it includes the, a new interview with Shirley Long, as well as deleted scenes, and <laughs> the real Phyllis Neffler herself, that happens to be the wife of Charles Fries, who produced this movie. And they did use a different cover art this time, which is coming from the home video poster. It looks so much better this time around because now you get to see the whole cast besides her. <laughs> and the background is all <laughs> palm trees everywhere. <laughs> uh, I like this. I think it looks so much better than all the others. So let's get right to it. it stars Shelley Long from Cheers, Craig T. Nelson from Poltergeist, and Coach Betty Thomas who later went on to direct movies such as the Brady Bunch movie, Mary Gross, Jenny Lewis, you know, who's now an alternative rock singer. I know she started doing the TV commercials such as the Toys R Us commercial and, and then she later went on to do films like The Wizard with Fred Savage from the One Years. Emily Showman also went on to do TV commercials with Jenny Lewis. Not to mention she was from the TV series Small Wonder, yeah, as Harriet. Yeah. Carlo Giugino, who went on to become very famous, including the movie that I actually liked from Polly Shore, of course, called Son in Law. Also includes uh, Kelly Martin. Tasha Scott, Amy Foster from Punky Booster, Audra Lindley from Freeze Company and The Ropers, Stephanie Beecham, Shelley Morrison, Tori Spelling, later went on to do Beverly Hills 91210, Willie Garson, Mary Pat Gleason, also has some cameo appearances by, by Pia Sidora, Cheese Moran, Dr. Joyce Brothers, Robert Leach, Kareem Abdul Jabber, and of course, uh, Frankly Avalon and Annette Francello. Yeah, God rest her soul. It's written by Ava Astern Fries, happens to be the wife of producer Charles Fries, written by Pamela Norris and Margaret Guico Oberman, and it's directed by Jeff Canu, who directed the movie. Tough Guys with Kurt Douglas and uh, Burt Lancaster. So let's get right to it. The movie begins set in Beverly Hills. Uh, a self-absorbed shopaholic who's also um, a very caring wife of a wealthy owner of an auto shop chain named Phyllis Neffler who's played by Shelley Long who's just recently being separated from her husband named Freddie, who's played by Craig T. Nelson. They also have a daughter named Hannah, who's played by Jenny Lewis, 
who's already been signed up for a local Girl Scout troop of the Wilderness Girls. But since they didn't have a leader other than the head leader, Frances Temple, she decided to go around Rodeo Drive, you know, after she's doing all of her shopping, and uh, sign up for an application on becoming the perfect Troop Scout leader. Unfortunately, you know, she lacks all the skills that most troop leaders have done. So she offers all the girls, includes Tiffany, Chica, Lily, Emily, Jasmine, Tessa, and Claire to join in. When Phyllis now becomes, as we speak, a part of the Wilderness Girls as a new True Scout leader, she winds up teaching the girls how to survive in the wilds of Beverly Hills, including while they stayed over at the Beverly Hills Hotel. They actually camp out until that particular rainy night kind of backfired. You know, she fell in into a mud, which is all a mess throughout her entire clothes, you know. And I know she had to carry her bags with her mouth. You know, just when they're about to go back inside the hotel, you know, she was actually asking the girls, not until we sing Kumbaya. Well, and they did, until they finally went back and had their own sleepover. Things are not going so well as it seems. She then begins to find out that Freddy now has a girlfriend, and I know she was spying on him and her, and, and I know she wants to fall down. <laughs> yeah, that particular scene. She also demonstrates uh, how to unravel the commitment to all the girls well-being and acts as a surrogate mother and friends to the girls. Also being neglected for her own wealthy and distracted parents out there. But of course during the award ceremony on the yacht, Freddie's uh, girlfriend gets knocked overboard and asks for a lifesaver which I know Phyllis actually respond, which flavor? Butterscotch or winter green? <laughs> So Freddie decided to remark on, on whenever she hopes to see Hannah actually learn a few outdoors and and all the silver defense skills that you know such as the first aid and all those other equipments that they use. Not to mention they're being signed up for a jamboree, so that means they get to team up with all the troop scout leaders out there, which includes uh, the meanest, who's also a former army nurse named. Belda Plantor, who's played by Betty Thomas, you know, because she also has a daughter named Cleo, who's played by Dinah Lacely, which is part of the group called the Clover City Red Fitters. So, her assistant scout leader named Anna Herman, who's played by Mary Gross, was assigned to actually go undercover and by becoming you know, Phyllis the scout leader you know, by actually you know, taking pictures that's hidden inside her hat and also write all these notes down and everything that they were doing you know while Phyllis is just basically teaching all the girls how to do a dance move yeah such as the mashed potato and all this other <laughs> crazy uh, 50 style dance moves that they come up with so it can become part of its style. <laughs> Their challenge was they had to learn how to do all the activities that they need to do in order to get all their merit badges, not to mention selling all these tons of millions of Girl Scout cookies for the entire public. Yeah, and they've been doing that alright, including that scene where yeah, you know, they wound up uh, selling all the cookies while during that dance craze, which is called It's Cookie Time. <laughs> Yeah, because that's where they do all these dance moves, as we saw. Which I know they have Claire dressed up as uh, Tina Turner. and you know, She was wearing that wig. Yeah, So in front of the whole crowd, you know, they were selling tons of cookies. Including all these celebrities that made their cameo appearances. Which includes Pia Sidora, Barbara Leach, uh, Kareem, Abdul, Jabber, you know, the basketball player, and, and all the rest. Yeah. yeah, I already know Frankie Avalon and... And then Fricella made a cameo appearance uh, during the middle part of the scene. You know, they were just jogging around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, 
Well, but much to Belda's dismay, the true Beverly Hills is yet unrecognizable by the region, the regional council. So they actually had to gain recognition by passing all the series of tests at the upcoming jamboree. And once they started doing all this, Phyllis is already having problems already by dealing with Freddie broken up with his girlfriend and wanted to proceed with a divorce, not to mention joint custody with Hannah. But Bilda meanly tries to talk her out of attending the, at the Jamboree, which warning that in the back country is that there's 20 miles from the nearest campsite and 100 miles from the Beverly Hills Hotel. So that's where she sinks into deep depression, you know, having to drink all these, these Evian water bottles, the entire case full of them, while her maid just goes around, you know, trying to cheer him up. So then Hannah and the other girls had talked her out of it by joining in. And then once they went into the Jamboree, the wet fetters are trying to get ahead of the True Beverly Hills by misdirecting them into a snake-fested swamp, which causes the troops to, to lose vital radio contact with Annie. Yeah, this is just basically part of Belda's tricks. Because I know they're all teaming up along with all the other troop scout leaders everywhere. But suddenly there was a skunk that shows up right beneath their path. And it actually scared all the troops away. And so they're running for their lives. Then they wound up going for a shortcut which actually has a huge log. You know, they were frightened by having to go all the way to the other side. Since the bridge has already been broken off. So they finally made it. But then Belda suddenly cheats and winds up uh, falling and, and hurting herself on a bear trap. Yeah, which her boot and her sock were were caught on there and already being removed only to find out that her ankle was broken. Yeah, that was a scene where all the scouts were trying to go or already trying to help, but then you know they just leave her behind and you know she started cursing at them and <laughs> Yeah, that's when the Trellis was this was like saying, "Oh, that sounds like the Beast." Yep, that's the Beast, all right. <laughs> yeah, so they help her out. You know, they got out of the uh, bear trap and they tried to finally went into the finish line, and so everything was all safe until you know, we know what was going on because Belda cheated the whole the entire jamboree. Yeah, they thought that the Red Fairs were going to win anyway until... But they were very discodified because the console laws stipulate that the, that the leader must be with their troop. And that's true. So, of course, Cleo wants up running off with the trophy. But the True Belly Hills wants up becoming the winners of the Jamboree. And validated as true wilderness girls. So, Francis Temple ends up firing Belda for the Wilderness Girls organization for cheating on the trail. So that's when she finally wants up working as a checkup girl at Kmart. Yeah, for the Blue Light Special. Yes, because she actually threatened Annie, her uh, leader, just to actually work over there. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, that was sort of a running joke. But it could have been worse. She would have worked at <laughs> Walmart. So now things are going so well for the True Beverly Hills. The girls' families had finally showed up. Freddie had impressed by Phyllis's complete turnaround, and they finally uh, to call off all the divorce, and now everything's back to the way it is. So now, by next year, they're finally um, now on signed by a new poster. You know, and so everything turned out good for the better. So the movie ends. And yeah, I, I, I thought it was alright. I mean, it wasn't the, the greatest comedy ever made for a family film, but I thought it worked pretty well. Yeah, I know it had some negative reviews uh, from critics. Yeah, they gave it an 8% on Rotten Tomatoes, although technically, I thought Shelley Lons' other film called Frozen Assets was way, way worse compared to this movie. Because this was so much better. In, in my opinion. I mean, like I said, it could have been worse. But uh, I thought Shelley Long did a good job playing the role of Phyllis Neffler, you know, having to, you know, struggle by becoming a 
troop scout leader to help out all the wilderness girls so that way they can earn merit badges selling all these cookies become part of the troop Beverly Hills as we know yeah and Craig T. Nelson you know who played Freddy in the film I mean he started out as a jerk at first because you know, he wanted to get divorced in order so he can have a girlfriend and, and actually uh, join custody with his daughter um, Hannah so Phyllis will be able to spend more time with her daughter and everything Everybody was good in this film, too. I mean, I, I like Emily Shulman and Jenny Lewis in the film, along with Carla Gugino. You know, I thought they were very good. It was great to see Tori Spelling in an earlier role before she went on to do Beverly Hills 90210. And, and of course, Amy Foster from Punky Booster. Yeah. They, they got to do all these fun activities and everything, even though most of it was pretty cheesy, as they seem. But, yeah, I know with the dance moves. But it's pretty rare because I know there are other better films out there when it comes to this, but I thought it worked pretty well because at least it focuses on, you know, Girl Scouts. It seems like a new theme for a movie. They also show some landscapes of Beverly Hills that's shot in, in a beautiful way, you know, where you get to see Rodeo Drive and all the rest of the places, and you, know, you get to see the Beverly Hills Hotel and all these other. Uh, all the rare stuff that you saw, they even show Wolfgang Puck's uh, Spago and even has the Jane Fonda workout too. <laughs> it, it just looks so beautiful the way they shot this movie. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought it worked pretty well. They actually improved this um, when I saw the transfer on the Blu ray. So I know there were some black levels here and there, but it wasn't too much. It actually looks a whole lot better as they've seen. Because I remember the. The transfer on, on the VHS and DVDs, or even on TV for that matter, they actually look overly bright. So, I don't know. So I thought it was fun. I, I always remember the uh, the intro of the film where, where they actually play the song uh, Make It Big by the Beach Boys. And they did the animated sequence that's actually done by, uh, you guessed it, John Kay from Ren and Stimpy fame. Yeah, under uh, Spumco Production Company. Yeah, because I knew I recognized the animation. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was cool. So, yeah, I mean, Belda was a jerk in, in this movie. She despised uh, Phyllis and all the rest of the troop. Troop Beverly Hills' attitude. She knew that she hated her so much that, you know, she's willing to win. <laughs> yeah. But she failed. <laughs> But uh, either way, you know, it was fun. I, I liked it. It was a guilty pleasure for me. And I, I would watch it any time. I, I, I saw this on TV when I was a kid. I bought the VHS later on. And I used to watch it a lot, too. I'm just glad that it finally came out on Blu-ray after all this time. Because I waited for years to finally get a copy of, of my own for this movie. To be in HD... You know, have all the extras, everything. Yeah. And I'm glad to see all the actresses, you know, they've moved on with their lives. You know, they're already doing a lot of stuff in their careers. So, yeah, it's too bad we could have saw some rare interviews with them, too. That would be awesome. Yeah, maybe do some commentary. Yeah, that would be fun. Not to mention, uh, Shelley Long was also a redhead, too. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because considering that she's a blonde... I thought she looks very good in in luscious red hair. Yeah. Also very beautiful, very hot. Yes, I agree. And yeah, she's she's also, as we speak, um, the perfect troop leader <laughs> for this movie. I can even tell that she really enjoyed working for this film. Even after leaving the series uh, Cheers. I know she's been going through a lot of promotions and everything, yeah, but either way, I, f I thought she was very good in this, and I liked her in this film, so, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, definitely check this movie out if you haven't seen it. I, I think it's very fun. You know, it doesn't matter what everybody said. It's a Girl Scout movie, but it's actually fun. Funny, hilarious. I would watch this anytime. So, anyway... I give True Beverly Hills three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.